Hey everybody, it's Bonnie Fitzgerald and I want to share with you how Kim and I made these really cool garden stakes. You too could do these. Recycled materials and designed in a way that the pole, that the stick, never pops through the top. I'm just going to go through some of the things I've collected to create these garden stakes. We may or may not use all of them, but they're all readily available at any big box store. I went on a run yesterday. We have some three quarter and half inch copper tubing. This uh, steel is called pencil rod. This uh, was a great find, I think. It's a driveway stake or marker so that you can see at night. It's even got a little reflection on it, so I can't wait to see how that works. Um, this is rebar. Uh, this was a good find too. This is um, some round brass tubing. And then we have some couplers, PVC, and a few other parts that I'm going to use. Uh, this is a tubing cap. This is the T for the tubing. And we're going to assemble this in a way that makes a sturdy garden stake that you can move and reuse and do whatever you want with. This is just some typical foam that you would get possibly with the television that you purchase. And I'm just gonna show you how easy it can be to cut with something as simple as a steak knife, or if you have a little coping saw that also cuts it very easily. We're using uh, polystyrene because it doesn't deteriorate in the environment whether it's heat or cold or wet or dry it will stay stable and it won't expand and contract i've made a little template of a bird here i'm going to transfer that onto the foam and then cut it out and it doesn't need to be completely perfect we just need general guidelines because when we get to putting it together we'll be able to uh, refine it a bit. And I'm making two because we are going to sandwich our, our garden steak mechanism in between here. And because in this case, the foam is thin. And later in the video, you'll see examples of how we get that mechanism inside when the foam is thicker. Now that I have my template transferred, I'm gonna go through some various ways of cutting it out. The coping saw, very simple tool, small teeth, and uh, we just have to cut along our lines. Also, works super good, and everybody has one of these in their house is something as simple as a steak knife. Um, you can also use power tools like a jigsaw. And I'm just gonna go back to cutting here. The nice thing about this little coping saw is it allows me to turn corners really simply. Now I'm back with both my pieces cut out. You can see by the edge, I use two different tools. This is a much smoother cut done with the jigsaw than my hand saw that I was cutting. But it, in the end, it's not gonna matter because this is all gonna be covered. And now I'm left with the this nonsense, which is stuck everywhere and it's just part of the process. So make sure you're in an environment that you can clean it up and vacuum it up and whatever, not just in your living room. For this video, we experimented with cutting a few different shapes using different thicknesses of polystyrene. So for this first circle, I am going to show you the mechanism. This is just a small piece of brass tubing. It comes in a package at the hardware store. We have a tubing cutter and this, when we're finished, will slip over this piece of pencil rod and you see it fits you know uh, fairly tightly so the rod doesn't tip back and forth now we're just going to cut it off 
And this is a simple and inexpensive tool. There's a few different um, varieties available. We're going to put a couple inches of it in, cut a couple inches off if I can get this done. Here we go. And then tighten it up till it's just fairly snug. Then you give it a couple twists around. Tighten it again. Oops. Well, too tight for me to turn it. And you can see that little dent it's making. And that's how easy that's cut off. Now, we need to find a way to embed this in. And first, I need to make close up the end in a way that this pencil rod won't go right through and in, into the styrofoam because eventually the weight and the weather will cause that pencil rod to go through and ruin your mosaic. Now I'm going to take this over to actually my hammer log and um, close up the end. I'm going to just take a regular hammer and flatten this out some. Now, if you have a vise or whatever, a big players too, you can do it with that. Just maybe like a third. So now we need to get this inside here somewhere. So I'm just going to take a bread knife and well, first I'm going to get an idea how far I need to go in. I'll just make a little mark with the knife. And I'm going to find the middle and just start sawing. Ooh. Maybe I need a different tool. Let's try this one. Still not good. When in doubt, use a hacksaw. I'm not cutting all the way through. I'm just cutting enough so that I can peel this. Piece off. Now. We'll move on to. Putting this in first. I'm just going to push this up here. And then we're going to carve a little channel in so that this can rest on top and go right back together. Okay, I just took this file. This is a really coarse kind of grit file. Fairly inexpensive. Again, hardware store, or Harbor Freight. Here's the piece I cut and flattened. Get that up in there. And now this will fit right over the top. And now we have a place that's really easy once we're done mosaicing to mount our finished artwork. And we don't have to deal with the rod the entire time. I know that most of you know that I really say Wellbond doesn't go outside. In this particular case, um, we don't care about it as much because further on in the creation of our artwork, this entire thing will be covered with um, mesh and adhesive and all kinds of things that protect the center from the elements and it won't be able to fall apart. So we're just going to weight this and in a minute, we'll go on to the next step. All right, our little circle here is all ready to apply the AR mesh. Let's talk about that a little bit. This is cement board tape. It's the same thing they would use in, when they're constructing your shower or anything where they're applying tile to. So 
The part that is the most important is it's self-adhesive alkaline resistant tape for use with thin set and mortar. So the fibers of this are special in the way that thin set and mortar would eat other fibers out, but these resist that and um, so your project won't weaken over time. If the uh, thin set eats the tape, like drywall tape, you can't use that because thin set would eat that tape and leave voids that allow deterioration. So covering's really simple. This is sticky and we're just going to go around overlapping. Um, if you get little bulges, then just make a snip so it will turn the corner for you and be a nice smooth transition. It doesn't really matter as long as you got some overlapping going on. All this is going to get covered. So here to go around the corner, I'll just make some uh, slits with my scissors and this will help us make the transition. All right, I'm still working at covering this and um, we're not going to worry at this point about every little bulge that's sticking out. We're going to do the best we can and then we're going to fix some of this as we go. So a little trick if you have some problem areas where things are popping up, you can buy some really short galvanized roofing nails, these are, and just hold it in place until you get your thin set over it. This isn't entirely necessary because the thin set will hold it down, but I'm kind of OCD, so I like things to be flat before I get started. A good palette knife or spatula will make your life easy, and it's really a personal preference about what kind you like to use. We have a variety out here, and different ones work better in different spots. So a little trick is to find something like a straw or a stick that fits in your hole, just so you don't lose track of it, and so you don't fill it. You can even like put a little uh, paper towel or a napkin around it. Okay, we kind of finished one side and you'll notice that we don't have the every little piece of mesh covered. We have a little sour cream container here. We're just gonna flip it over and it's not gonna matter that it leaves a ring from the container because we're going over it one more time. Now we can coat on this side uh, and let all this set up a ways. In other upcoming Garden Stake videos on the channel, we show you tricks to mosaic the surfaces and demonstrate how to assemble even larger artworks. Check it out and please subscribe. And remember, life's a mosaic, you pick the pieces.